The Share Pickers Weekend Podcast with Justin, Paddy, Peter, and Steve. The content of this podcast is not intended as investment advice. It is for information purposes only. People in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Welcome to the Weekend Podcast with Paddy and Pete. It's like I'm the band back together, guys, isn't it? Hey, I've been ready for ages. Mm, have you missed us? I can see the enthusiasm's there for it. <laughs> Paddy, you there? Paddy comes on camera, right? We go on Skype. Paddy is insistent on showing us his ripped body because uh, he does a lot of workouts and stuff. So as far as I'm concerned, he's naked, but we see him from the waist yeah. up. And he refuses to put his camera off. It's very disconcerting. You know, it's like a deviant sitting yeah. there looking through your window or something. You know, just It's like your next-door neighbour just being naked from the waist up looking through your window. Thing. Excuse me, Paddy, yeah. do you mind just moving along? Uh, anyway, it's, it's still the weekend podcast, but Paddy suggested yeah. calling it the fun podcast, the Share Bants podcast, Shares with a Sprinkling of Awkward Jokes podcast, because he wants to record on a Thursday. Why a Thursday, Thursday Paddy? Thursday's just more convenient. Saturday, this is the rare Saturday morning you're going to get me. What do you do Saturday on Saturday mornings? Mo- what do you do on Saturday mornings normally then? Just, you know, stuff, you know. Yeah, it's, more important it's stuff. stuff. Bits and bobs. Yeah, more important than like, like being in the queue for being Q before anyone else. Exactly. Yeah, you get some MDF. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get the last <laughs> slice of MDF. Uh, anyway, so Pete, you've been, in, yeah, you've been in, in France. How was that? Yeah, uh, it was very good, yeah. It's just uh, experimenting with remote working. And it worked yeah, out, it was yeah, a good no, no, experiment. No, no, but remote working, though, generally, <laughs> is from home. It's not from France. You were taking them to a different no. level. You were already taking the yeah. pee, aren't you? No, it's good. So uh, you take your whole company out there? No, no, no. Um, a, bu- a bunch of people. Yeah, we, we rented a place and then different people came out different weeks and uh, I-, I managed to wangle it, so I stayed there for five weeks. Nice. Yeah, yeah so I was yeah. going to say, you took some pictures and it uh, did look very nice, very scenic, wasn't it? And uh, is it, yeah. it's, it's basically in, in, in one of the ski resorts in, in the summer, isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, sort of, yeah, down in the valley from a ski resort, but uh, kind of good for cycling and it just so happens I really like cycling. So, yeah, all around Alpe d'Huez and Galibier and all those sort of famous places. So, yeah, it was uh, it was very nice. I uh, did lots of work as well, though, obviously. Yeah, of course. What, yeah. Are, the, what are the tax implications of that, Pete? Uh, yeah, you have to stick it on your P11D, you mm-hmm. know. It, it's, a, it's, a benefit. it's a benefit in kind. But do you need a work permit to be working remotely no. in France these days? No, I think you've got 90 days or something you can work there. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Cool. And, and on day 91, do they knock on your door yeah. say, Excuse me, monsieur. Out! You're Brexit! Yeah. So you're not allowed to the Schengen area again for another 180 days? Uh, I don't know. I don't know exact rule, the exact rules, and I'm not sure. Uh, that's I'm, no, I'm, telling, I'm telling you, you're not. Yeah, but who's, okay. who's going to keep a check on it? Thanks to Justin's plan. Who's going to keep oh, yeah. a check on it? No, exactly. True. Do you know? I don't know. Let me ask you. Let me ask you something. I I don't want to get too deep into politics, right? Because you know, Paddy will set him off. (laughs) That's when he gets really passionate. (laughs) Normally, he's laid back on the podcast. You get him into politics. It's like firing up a Ferrari. (laughs) But um, yeah, but is is Brexit working? (laughs) 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 Isn't it funny though? Before I get into politics, I do find it amusing that uh, Liz Truss' name's got the word trust in it. But she, I, I just, she's a liar, isn't she? She's like Boris, exactly the same. You know, it's, and it, when it comes down to Sunak can trust, it's not who you want, it's who you don't want. I don't want either of them, but it's who you want yeah. the least. I, I don't see anything attractive about any of the uh, Tory at the start, even when there's ten of them. Now it, it's, it's like it's like we come down to two. Oh, I, I don't want to get into it. It's just, it just uh, it's, it's wild. Well, I think what's what's weird about without wishing we to get into politics. What's weird about these two? <laughs> yeah, you is... can't pre you can't prefix it with that plan <laughs> no, and gonna, then get into politics. I'm going to say something uh, that's not too revelatory, um, but like these two clearly like so Sunak is clearly intelligent. Liz Truss is clearly not. But they're both they both decided to hide that by sort of going down to the dialing down to the very base level. Yeah. So mm. and that I think is hopefully just something they're doing to get past Tory party members. But if they continue that into their premierships, whichever one of them gets it, then that's really worrying. Like you would have hoped that Johnson going would have been a line in the sand. Right. We're going to be better than that guy. 
and they've both decided they want to be worse. Yeah. And that's... <laughs> that, I mean, that's no, no, do you know what it reminded me of? I thought this the other day. You know, you know the people who do well on social media are the extremists, you know, because you yeah. get uh, polarising views and you get their, their clan following. And that, to me, seems what they're trying to do. They're trying to be extreme one way or the other to attract, you know, the, the, the really hardened Tories, you know? Like, we'll yeah. kill people who come in illegal in this country. And they're just saying, calm down. And trouble is, you know, sensible policies... Don't seem to grab any attention, do they? That's the thing. All they're playing for is attention at the moment. Uh, and you're thinking, uh, yeah, I hope they do dial it down. I hope this is just campaigning, you know, because uh, at the moment... And what's annoying, do you know what bloody annoying is? Is that none of them are talking about energy bills, pretty much. Hardly. It's all about ego no. battles. Thinking, everyone in the country is pretty much worried about energy bills. Every everyone, and they've and hardly ever mentioned it. That she wouldn't be doing anything to help. Like that was one of the policies. I know. Is like, she? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like it's There'll not. Be it's no not, help this it, winter. Like, it's not an elephant cool. in the room, is it? It's, it's like a, a herd of them, and they're just ignoring them. And thinking, everyone's concerned about this one thing that you're not even mentioning hardly. But it's, uh, it's annoying. But um, talk about holidays. I went to Turkey. I went to Turkey for uh, oh, yeah. all, all inclusive. Do you know all inclusives are nice because the food we went to uh, the place called the Hilton in Delaman. Lovely food, but when it's all inclusive, you get the point where you're dreading the next meal. You know, you've eaten so much you can't put anything more in your belly, and it's like uh, uh, we, there, we've done this before and we've explained to I, you, I, you I, don't I, have to eat. I all know, of the food. but it's very. I, I was quite res- reserved actually, but I did feel like the creosote man from Monty Python. You know, have you seen that way <laughs> saying one weapon in mince? <laughs> no, piss off and pull. And uh, literally explodes. I felt like that. But I was trying to do as much exercise as possible. And I tell you what I discovered. Swimming burns the calories. It's like almost equivalent or better than running. I was doing like 30 lengths of a 30-meter pool in the morning. And then every, every like hour, I'd get off my backside, stop, stop reading and do another sort of 10-minute swimming. And uh, I was burning like, yeah. you know... Really exceeding all, all the Apple Watch goals, and um, so it was, yeah, I, was, I love that. But I'm sure I was thinking about this on the way back home uh, from you know, uh, they, you know, forcing me onto the planes, five air hostesses pushing me through the door because I couldn't squeeze through. Mm. It. But I was thinking, yeah. I, I'm sure a plane full of uh, I- I- tourists, they've all gone to all inclusive. The plane must weigh more on the way home, surely, right. isn't it? Yeah. And, and planes it- are all about weight, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's why the ticket's more expensive on the way back, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, excuse me, we have to chuck one fatty off because you're yeah. exceeding, guys. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I just realised Turkey's inflation, talk about inflation, 80%, 80. Wow. Great. That is wow. nuts, isn't it? And we, we yeah. when we first got there, 100 Turkish lira would buy £5. When we left, £4.60 it would buy. It's lost 8% of its value in a month. Wow. That is nuts. So they, they don't want Turkish lira over there. They, they, you know, tip the waiters and all that stuff. Yeah. They don't want a lira. They, they change it straight to pounds or dollars or euros. Um, so it's, it, that's how scary inflation is. But, you know, Eridan, or is it Eridan, the, the main guy there, yeah. he's gone against you know, all central banks. Of, yeah, when inflation happens, they rise interest rates. He's been reducing his. <laughs> no, that's nonsense, that is. And literally, <laughs> inflation's gone skyrocket. He's completely, you know, talking about bad leaders. But he's saying that, the, you know, there's certain things they do quite well, the drones and stuff. Um, but, uh, but, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, but it's nuts, right. isn't it, how you just ignore, you know, the central thesis of monetary policy and just go your own way, basically. Say, no, that's it's almost like saying, no, if I throw petrol on this fire, it won't go crazy. No, no, it's fine. You need more petrol. You need yeah. more petrol. You throw it on, it goes crazy. It'll calm down in a bit. I mean, there's not a huge amount of evidence that, uh, that changing interest rates actually has a proper effect on normal consumers, though, is there? Like that, that, that's, I mean, especially we're, st- we're still talking pretty low levels here. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is here, like, well, yeah, yeah, but inflation... Spending is, is yeah. not... No, it, it is slowly. It is. I mean, if you look at all supermarkets and all that stuff. So, what, if you look at it, it's common sense, isn't it? So, they yeah. said that the cure for you know high prices is high prices. So, on its own, inflation will bite unless you get wage increases to equal that. They yeah. will bite because even now, yesterday, we cancelled a couple of things that we're not using. So, you know, whereas before you wouldn't even look at it, like Apple TV, I cancelled that after a while because I haven't watched anything since the Beatles. Uh, stuff, small things like that, you start cancelling, you start looking at your spending. So, behaviorally, behaviorally, how do you say that? Yeah. Um, mm. it, you do change. Behaviorally. You, yeah. If you look at yourself now, for example, oh, I want to spend a bit less here. If, 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 if this costs you 150 quid to fill up your car, then you'll just drive less, you know? Um, because the supermarket, or this, I'm even Megan saying now, she's looking at things a lot more prices wise. Now, if everyone does that, if everyone spends a little bit less, if everyone fills their car up less, and you talk about that, extrapolate that over millions of people, 
that has an effect on the economy. You know, it does. People you buy less, they produce less. The company, and also say supermarkets get squeezed in both ends because commodity prices have gone up. So producing stuff, it costs more. Uh, people are buying less. So what happens? Yeah, yeah. But, but, but profiteering is also a massive driver of inflation, isn't it? So yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I buy some pita bread in Tesco's, which is sort of the wheat-free pita bread in Tesco's. This is, <laughs> right. this is crazy. They're like, what are they, they making with? Well, exactly. So... So you make a normal pita bread out of wheat and flour, uh, wheat flour and whatever. Like there's like you know a few ingredients in it. The normal, yeah. the, the wheat-free ones are made of like rice flour and yeah. like the list of ingredients is not. It's not like it's made of myrrh and gold. But a pack <laughs> of a pack of uh, wheat-free pita bread in Tesco's was two pounds eighty, which is already absolutely insane for what it is. It's yeah. like you know you know what pita bread is. Um, yeah. That's now gone up to three pounds ten. So. In their world, they've decided that, you know, the price of rice has shot up so much that it needs to add 40p. I don't know what the percentage is on that. I mean, that's that's not realistic. That's just purely profiteering. Well, well, no, no, hang on a sec. When you think about that, if you look at the price, in fact, I've got a chart here of wheat right in front of me, right here in front of me, all the commodities charts, right? But if you look at um, commodities, for example, wheat has gone down, right, 40% from its high, but... It did double, uh, more than double in price. Now, if you look at wheat, the, the you know the input costs for wheat, for example. So if that's gone up by, uh, it's doubled. Plus, you get energy costs going in because, of course, to make wheat, you need energy, and then you have to yeah. transport that. All that, so all that's going up. But what yeah, is wheat free? Yeah, but what about uh, rice? Yeah, yeah, rice will be the same. Right? All commodities gone by, they doubled pretty much. So um, not if, not necessarily. But well, they're already charging. So a normal pack of pita bread is sixty p. So this this was already. Mm. four times more expensive so that's already a massive profit gouge that's that's crazy so to add no, even that's, more that's on the... top of that yeah but if you yeah. Yeah, but apparently all the it's not just the ingredients is it it's the input costs no, that go know, into know, that know, the know, energy it, costs it, are doubled it is, everything's it is, doubled it is, it is impossible for a four pack of pit of bread to actually cost two pounds 80 to produce like the profit on that must be insane oh yes so, but, you, but yeah but if you even, even take the profit you know what comes out yeah. of that, the cost you know, but, I mean, you understand that everything's pretty much doubled in the last 12 months Doubled. Absolutely, absolutely. So not, not but, only forty percent. The prices we're paying for some stuff in the supermarket and in, in general in our lives, the prices that they've put things up by does not is not uh, equitable to actually the price increases that they're having that they're facing. That these companies are making massive profits. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at. So actually, another sort another way of uh, easing the burden on people's wallets would be for the government to get behind wage increases and to try and force through some productivity changes and they've not done any of that yeah you know I, 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 I'm not just going back to the government but no I, I, I agree with that I agree <laughs> with that you know you know wage increases to a certain extent yeah. but what they're saying about and I, I hate people like Andrew Bailey telling people not to get wage increases when he's on like uh, 800 grand a year or something so the yeah. government of the Bank of yeah. England you, you're in no position mate to talk about people earning minimum wage not getting a ri- rise because they're the communal yeah. suffering but no, that, if you are on some sort of minimum wage or living wage or whatever like I said you will be spending less and that's the thing and if yeah. you look at the majority of people aren't well off in the country you know if everyone is cutting back on bits and pieces here and there that affects the growth of the, of the economy GDP that, that means it will do we will go in I mean did you see the Bank of England is saying now you know we're going into recession and I, I did do a survey saying is that a surprise does that surprise you what they thought was it did you see that no was, not at all I thought yeah. I can't I felt we're already in recession. I thought the figures yeah. would be starting to show that we are in recession. Yeah. And it, what is it, two uh, consecutive quarters? Of well, well, do you know what? Do you know what? In America, they've changed the definition. It's like America's oh, in recession, just, right? So it, it was two quarters yeah. of contracted growth. So, you know, it's slowing down. Now, in America, they've had that. No, that's not the definition of recession. It is. And they say, no, it's yeah. not. It's from, it, we're looking at employment. That's the definition. So like, all of a sudden, they're trying to change the definition. Do you hate politicians? It's like, we've always yeah. gone by that rule, you fool. But you it know, is so- also crazy that we're, that we're tied to this idea of growth being important. Like, that's, that is actually uns- completely unsustainable. Like, if, if we're saying that for, the f- for every year in the future, we need to see 3% growth across GDP, that is the only way that's possible and the only way it has been possible is by by getting fossil fuels out the ground. But the only way it's going to continue to be possible is through lots of immigration, because our population is generally decreasing, and depleting the the planet's resources. Like that that cannot continue forever. At some point, we've got to just calm down on that and accept that maybe. Well, do you know what? You know, how it's possible? Go on. <laughs> by, ha- by having contractions. 
and well, then yes. it resets. It resets, yeah. and you, you find it's an awful thing to say, but you find the companies that are inefficient got a business, so that market share is picked up by a company that's mm. more efficient, and they grow. And that's that's the way it works, you know. So, so, so you know, we and the need... only way that they they stay as, as efficient is by trying to suppress wages as far as low as possible, trying to cut their costs as low as possible. Like we well, are. There's in, also we innovation. Are... There's also innovation and stuff. You know, I mean, there are things like automation and innovation that makes Again, it more efficient. Wages. Like, that yeah. just makes less people employed. Like the, all these things. No, it doesn't actually... have to be. It doesn't have to be. It's like, well, in it's general, like... in general, no, no, it, it, means, but... it means one person running twelve checkouts at Tesco as opposed to twelve people running twelve checkouts. Like, like that. No, that it doesn't. Efficient. Listen, there are parts of the economy, Pad, that they can't get workforce for. Like for a long time, they've yeah. been struggling to get long, you know, long distance lorry drivers, people delivering all that stuff. Now, why? Because they're, they're hard. and also in areas that are not pleasant to work in, you can have you know, or can automate it, but have a supervisor, do, you know, check in the machine. So yeah, that, just, that, that, just, does that or just pay them more wages. Just pay yeah, them no, more I, wages agree with, I agree with that. Them. I agree with that. What I'm worried about is saying that the, the inflation will come embedded, you know, uh, uh, and you can see what happens here. Now, if, if you have, a, say, a, a, a company or employees saying, we want, you know, 10% increase in our wages because inflation's already at 10%, but mm. you realise that is not the norm for inflation. It will come back down. So, you mm. know, if you have people demanding 10%, in, 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 you know, a raise increase and then next year yeah. inflation goes out of five percent so you think well hang on a sec yeah. that's gonna so what happens then you pay people more um you know companies then have their margins squeezed Charge anyway so more. they'll just raise their yeah. prices because they yeah. have to get yeah. the margins and th that's what means embedded so that, you've got to be careful yeah. I, I agree with wage increases but it's got to be to the point where it's not crazy wage increases otherwise inflation will carry on and that'll suffer everyone will suffer again so you know and also pad you can't have it both ways, can you can't have wage growth and then and also I don't want the economy. You don't have to have three percent growth, you know. And the economy, it all grows together, doesn't it? Yeah, no? yeah, yeah. But there has to be like so. Inequality is the is the biggest problem here. So you've got your yeah. But I the, agree. Uh, I agree. No, yeah. The one I'm worried about. That's fine. No one questions that. Yeah, thirty three percent for the CEO. No problem at all. But the the guy who's actually on the shop floor can't have more than three percent. Oh, that, that's that's crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. So but, but, yeah, so that, yes, it's a lot more complicated than a simple, uh, you know. Wage growth and don't worry about it. there. And it's being paid to shareholders, and this is how we can get this yeah. back to what we're talking about today. Oh, nice. Um, well, up. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. But listen, uh, uh, the CEOs are making lots of money, but the people actually doing the work on the shop floor aren't. No, I agree with that. And we should try yes. to achieve equality as much as possible. But do you know what? It's never going to happen, Pad. It's never, sadly, it's never going to happen. Uh, and, uh, no, but you, you, know. you, can, uh, you can target it, can't you? Yes, you, you can it. target it's, it. It used to, to happen parity. a lot better, didn't it? No, yeah, yeah, we can it. target it a lot better than it's happening at the moment, absolutely. Because, it, it, like I said, and that the sad thing is, when inflation happens, it affects and already our energy bills. In fact, you see that report out today saying it looks like they're going up to £4,000 a year now by January. And already, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not poor, but we're thinking, bloody hell. And yet, if you are poor or you are, you know, under sort of national average wage, I don't know how people are going to cope. I don't know how they're going to cope with that. No, it's really worrying. They're not. Yeah, they're not. And that's, that's, you know, a complete failure of government whose, you know, primary role is to make sure their citizens are looked after and are, uh, are able to, you know, have nice lives. And if you can't even, if you're choosing between food and heating this winter, which yeah. thousands of people will be doing, yeah, you know, I, I'll, I'll be doing that in some cases, you know, I mean, not not to an extreme level, but I will definitely not be having my heating on every day if I'm working from home. I'll be snuggled you know, up under my blanket. Yeah, that, we, uh, uh, last night, in fact, you know, last night, it got a bit chilly at one point compared to the... Uh, the and uh, Megan Sidori oh. said, Megan Sidori said, we're not putting the central heating on. And, and, and do you know what? It's that kind of reaction already. You're just a bit yeah. more careful. Everyone being a bit more careful makes, you know, basically people stop spending. And that's what's can, needed. Can, can I also say, I'm not putting the central heating on because it's August. It's August. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. no, no. But that's I, the same I, thing. To I, think, I, yeah, I wasn't going to anyway, but Megan just jumped no, at it. No. You know, And you realise your thoughts, the way you're thinking, like your behaviour changes, doesn't it? And even that adjustment across millions of homes makes the, the, the economy slow down. Now, the Bank of England said, Pete, are you still there? You, I think your internet's dipping out. Peter? What? I think you're, you're, you're going on Dalek voice sometimes. Um, so, EDA broadband. Are you cutting back on the broadband spend? Is that what you're doing? There? <laughs> Have you gone for a cheap, yeah, yeah, cheap no, provider? I've, I've gone for a cheap provider with one, one megabyte upload. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, the Bank of England, this, this statement, this, this survey, was the Bank of England's statement about a recession expected or worse than expected? 62.5% said expected. Now, the Bank of England came out and they said, 
They said, um, we are going into a, a quite, you know, a, a long protracted recession. We'll probably come out of it at the back end of 2023. And they reckon now inflation will get to 13%. They did say previously 9%. Uh, and so they're behind the curve a little bit. So they are worrying. And, uh, but the thing is, right, the markets, right, the markets are always ahead, way ahead. I saw the Russ Mould about this. He said, don't pay attention to the Governor Bank of England. They're way behind. They're all lagging data that you know, we all know about. Um, and, and they have meetings once a month, once every two months. And yet they're working on lagging data. And if you look at the all, the, the all, aim, share, all aim All Share Index, for example, it hit a high back in September, right? It knew something was going on, right? And then it started a fall. It fell by 34% to its low in July. Now, central banks now talk about recession, when, when a recession will end. So the market already priced in the recession pretty much. So I'm saying, and I said on Twitter, when do you think the markets will price in the end of a recession? Because they're way ahead of the central banks, you know? And, uh, and, and normally, is looking at this guy called Fundstrat, worth looking at on Twitter. He says the markets tend to rise three to six months before the last interest rate hike. And, um, and that could happen. If you're looking at it, now we've raised to 1.75. People reckon we could get 3% by the end of the year, and that may be the top of it. Uh, um, and so they've got three more monetary policy committee meetings, September, November, December. And if they raise by half a basis point again in September, half again in November, and 25 basis points in December, that's 3%. So how many months are we away from uh, December now? Where are we at? August, September, October. Four. Four? I, I, when, right. I, honestly, uh, I think we're close to it. The markets rally way before, before a great financial crash. We were still in recession when the market started rallying. Um, the market started rallying in, in, in end of March in 2009, and we're still but in recession. It, need a, it needs a trigger. It needs a trigger of some description, doesn't yes, it? Yes, the trigger right. is this. It's, it's, things are not getting right. worse. And and if you look okay. at and right. if you look at, if you look at commodities, right? I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking about economically. I'm not. I'm talking about if you look at commodities, they're all fallen pretty pretty much. Matter of gas. I mean, that's, that's, that's pumped back up recently. It's only down 13 percent from high now, but it was down 42 percent. But everything, Doctor Copper. That's what Russ said. Pay attention more to Doctor Copper. The Doctor Copper is called that because it plays into every part of the economy pretty much when growing, and so yeah. it's a barometer for economic health. That's down 35 percent from high. Wheat down 41 percent. Silver down 32. Brent down. Brent oil down 23 percent. They're all in bear markets. You know, WTO 29 percent. Mm. Corn 31 percent. Uh, so all these are now going to take a while to get up the, you know to, to, these prices be reflected on the, on the shelves. But it is happening. Mm. And I think in six months' time, inflation will be a lot lower. So as long yeah. as we've seen now, the next, I think the next sort of inflation readings are, I think, the next week. So we'll see. Maybe it's a bit early yet to translate, translate into, into falling prices. But I don't think it'll get any worse. I don't think, I mean, a powerful, the only thing that's going to get worse is that energy cap thing. I don't know, the energy cap is nuts. Yeah. It? It's a cap, yeah. but the cap is getting taller and bigger and thicker. So um, that's... Well, it's also crazy. So this is the thing that, that I mean, I hate to bring this back to the government, but... Um... You love to bring it back <laughs> no, to the no, government. No, what are you talking no, about? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They really, I hate to, they really guys, I hate to bring this here. back. I hate to bring it back to Tory. Can I help. bring it back to the government, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they really could do something here to help on that. Like, we, in this country, mm. we've got a lot of renewable energy mm. and we generate... Uh, certainly during the summer and, and I guess with the wind stuff during the winter as well you know a big percentage of our energy now comes from renewable which is dramatically cheaper than gas but yet the renew the, pros the price of electricity is priced based on the gas price yeah. which is insane just separate those two things and allow British people to use the, the, the renewables which are cheaper and bring that price down and no, but the re renewables because uh, a lot People's uh, You're dipping out again, bills or supply is sort is, your broadband out, Pete. Oh, am I? Yeah, oh, are, you okay. on, are you on Wi Fi? Are you on one? Are you on 1G? What are you on? That's it. Yeah. You've gone back yeah, to 1G. 1G, it's cheaper. 1G, just go back to 1G. Yeah, mm. it's a quarter of the price of 4G. <laughs> yeah, so it's, yeah. It's, it's much better. A quarter, a quarter of the um, quality. Go on, but isn't, isn't it true that a lot of the providers, a lot of suppliers, uh, include renewable as part of their provision? So it makes no sense that how is renewable. Uh, being charged more for now when it's renewable. I don't understand that bit. Yeah, because they like, are pegged to, it's pegged to the, 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 it's the gas price. Yeah. I read something uh, an excellent... Yeah, but why? Uh, yeah, exactly, last, why? Uh, why exactly? So, I, so we need to, if, if we're going to, if we're going to reap the benefits of this, uh, this island that we're on, which has lots of wind and um, has yeah. the ability to, to generate lots of power that way, 
A, we need people like Richie Sunet not going, not, not making it a policy to have no more wind turbines, which is insane. Mm. But also, we need we need to lean into that, have even more of them, but then pass that price advantage on to consumers, so that you know now we've got these wind farms all around the country. Let's actually then pay the price that is, um, that that that, that the, the price decrease that that brings on, so that we're not tied to gas anymore. Like yeah, that's but a, I think Sunak said he wasn't. He, he said he wasn't in, in favour of onshore wind. Yeah, I mean, not well, I mean, that, that is by 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 a massive uh, percentage the cheapest form of ge- electricity generation in possible. So. Yeah. Like it's ridiculous to just rule it out just for a few nimbies who who don't like seeing them in their back garden. No, I know. Did you yeah. see that debate? On, I don't, I've not I've not tuned into any debates. I did catch the one on Sky with that lady. I don't really like what's her name. The one who actually broke COVID rules. I can't think of her name now from Sky. Uh, but um, and he did say oddly, you know, what about fracking? He said it's down to local decisions. People want it there. It's fine. And he uh. said so he said oil and gas. Well, what about that? It's down to local decisions. Then he came to onshore wind, hmm. and he said no. Offshore yeah. wind is fine. But hang on, if you're leaving energy down to local decisions, why not the same with wind? It's up to you know, it's up to people locally, isn't it? I don't mind a big, I wouldn't mind a big windmill in the back of my garden. I wouldn't mind but that. Like, the, the Croydon, just cover it in wind turbines. Like I mean, literally, like, what, what is the? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Like, improve, improve it. Yeah. Improve it. Yeah. Yeah. Improve it. Yeah. Yes, people come see Croydon, the, 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 the town of wind. You know, yes. or the, the wind turbine, <laughs> the, the new Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah. So the wind nice. capital of the UK. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, do you know what? I, I, I did look at this the other day, and there's an odd coincidence. The UK government earns around £27 billion a year from fuel duty. Now, they can remo- we, we, again, we are, we, we've been the, the worst performer, apart, I think apart from Luxembourg or something like that, I don't know, one of the countries. In, in Europe, they've all reduced their fuel duties massively, like 30 pence, uh, and we've done 5 pence. And we are, out of 13 countries, we've reduced it the least Five pence. And I said, the, the government earns about 27 billion a year from fuel duty. Oddly, there's around 27 million households in the UK. So I said, so I said, a survey here, to help with energy bills, would you prefer the government to give a thousand pound to all households or 3,000 pound to 33% of the households with low income? And I thought, people on Twitter here, it was a bit selfish here, because I would have gone for 3K to the lowest income families, you know, on, as long as they spend it on en- energy, of course. But the survey was 54.2% said £1,000 to all. And let's be honest, there are people living in mansions who don't need it, you know. Mm. Uh, uh, and 45.8% said £3,000 to the lowest income. Well, I, I mean, I probably, you know, uh, uh, queer the pitch here a bit. But what would you have gone with? Would you have gone £1,000 for all or £3,000 for the lowest income families? Uh it would oh, seem yeah. fair to, to give to the lowest uh, income, yes, because it surely then helps support that tier of the economy, doesn't it? So, yeah. But some people said it seemed fair to give a thousand pound war because every human is a human, yeah. isn't it? So, uh, yeah, but I thought, uh, you know, I, I can get by on these energy bills. It's not a, a, a yeah. lot of people can't. So, um, you know. Also, you live in a house which has got, you know, presumably some nice loft insulation and, you know, an efficient yeah. heating system. Like so the people on lower incomes, A, they live in. The houses which you know sometimes heated by those like electric heat like i mean the, the yeah. cost is it's uh, not the same yeah. like it's, it's not no. it's not equal but so, pa- pa- also also uh justin was going to put the heating on in august so yeah. Yeah. no i wasn't going to put the no i this is what i said i said it's a bit chilly isn't it megan said don't put the heating on i but bet I'm, there were people who put the heating on last night in, the, well, in this well, country well if they really? are I if bet it, there were, yeah. Yeah, some people were. My, but... my, my old next door neighbour used to, uh, you can hear when their gas is churning because their gas meter is really loud and you can hear it through the wall. And she used to have the heating on literally every night, all year round. Well, she's going to uh, suffer then, isn't she? Uh, you know, yeah. uh, I mean, it, when she gets her bills, she's probably thinking, oh, I shouldn't have put the heating on in, in August. But, the, but there are people in this country who, who have got used to that level of um, comfort and just stifling refused, heat refused yeah. yeah yeah and just refused to kind of they haven't put the two and two together so you know the, these increases in in gas prices are horrendous and will cause a lot of pain but hopefully for people these sort of who are maybe middle class households who have just been a little bit frivolous might they might might start questioning whether they need to have the heating on all the time yeah 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 well i mean yeah. if you but you understand why contraction happens when you get you know, tens of millions of people just cutting in a little bit, just you know, tightening their belt a bit. That affects the economy massively, you know, hugely. Uh, so, but do you know what? What you must not not confuse with is the economy and the market. 
And like I said, market sees way ahead. Like I said, the economy will suffer. Certain parts of the economy will suffer over the next six, 12 months, definitely. And in fact, for certain mm. sectors and even investing, I mean, you know, certain companies will be affected by the downturn in spend from people. And this won't be reflected like, you know, over, over the next, because of course, financial reports are three to six months you know, release uh, delayed, so uh, they release after real time. So you'll see, you know, reports come out from certain companies that a discretionary spend maybe, maybe is not as good, not hit, hitting expectations. So I, I think it's very important right now, I'm getting around to, you know, a, a company here, but I think it's very important that you have in your portfolio a company that's not only insulated from this, who may even benefit from it. Because honestly, it, it, I think for certain parts of the economy, they will struggle over the next year or so. But the market generally, but it may be mitigated by the market rallying anyway, because once the market rallies, all boats seem to lift on the tide. But um, yeah, anyway, so I talk about individual companies, boys. Go no, on, five, you got five minutes. Five minutes? When do you start? What time do we start? <laughs> See him, Mont. Monty's waving. By the way, he's going up to. Um, he's got his Spurs I'm kit on. on. He's got. He's got a Spurs kit on. Pad. Oh, and, he, yeah. and he's oh, going nice. up to watch. And I said to him, he's playing, You know, we live near. We, we live near Southampton. I said, Mont, you got to support yeah. Southampton, surely. He said, No. Yeah. Spurs. Yeah. I said, You weren't born in North London. Yeah. What's the Load problem with you? And he said, yes. uh, No. So he's got up there watch it live with his uh, his granddad. He's leaving now. Nice. Um, uh, so God uh, saints. Yeah. So uh, uh, this is why. Have you any of you taken the position in E Energy? No. No. Because this is about, um, you know, I'm new, Pete. I thought you did, Pete. No. Oh, okay. Uh, I'd love to, but I'd, I'd have to sell something. And I'd, well, I'd, 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 I'd say, I said to Pete, uh, Steve uh, on the WhatsApp, I said, listen, it's probably worth, even if you're underwater on a company that you may think may suffer over the next you know, six, 12 months because the economy's contracting a bit and discretionary spend will go down, even if you're underwater, you know, put in a company that will benefit over the next few... Because everything's a lagging factor. I mean, if you look at E-Energy, they are designed pretty much... Right now, the biggest spend, apart from payroll, that most companies have is energy. And most energy bills have doubled. And there's lots of reports on this thing, especially schools. I mean, E-Energy also do a lot of schools. But uh, they're saying this will re reflect in, you know, not being a able to raise wages for teachers, not being able to hire new staff. Essentially, services suffering. And most companies will probably go, you know, if not loss-making, there will be loss-making, and some companies will go bust on energy bills. So, E-Energy, you know, amazing uh, sort of, uh, they do is no capital upfront costs for anyone. They pay, you know, as a subscription service. They'll reduce your energy bills, also get a net zero for you, help you get net zero. And uh, they're going gangbusters. And I just think... That's an area of the economy. So there's two areas there. First of all, there's going to be high energy bills for a while. It'll take a long time for this inflation to come down. It won't just fall off a cliff. It'll gradually come down. Maybe it'll just peak back, peak back up. Uh, uh, but it'll take a long time. But also the net zero goal that most companies have, that's another mega trend that you know most companies set targets for. So, And if you look at the, the figures, they just released a trading update. So they did 22 million of revenue um, last year. The financial year ends on the 30th of June. So we're now in 2023. Uh, they did 22 million of, uh, of uh, revenue, 3 million of EBITDA. Um, and they said they're well placed to deliver significant year-on-year -year revenue growth. But if you look at the, what they've done, they, they announced, of course, a breakdown in the figures. Okay, In Q3 of 2022, which was from January to March, they did 8.6 million in contracted revenue. In Q4, they did 8.3 million. So if you add those two together, that's 16.9 million in the first six months of this year. And they're guiding towards 30.5 million this year. They even did, did, replicated that. That would be 33.8 million. So above what they're thinking. Now, if you want to like about this, recurring contracts, um, recurring revenue, which is very good because you've got visibility over forward revenue, and long-term, average contracts about five, well, three to six years, they're saying. In fact, for, for certain parts of the business, it's six years. So, And they, they, they did give their outlook for 2023. They said they've also already got an order book of 25.3 million contracted, which is pretty much where their market cap is, which is nuts. And that's gone up from 18 million since December. 88% of Q1 revenues, so that's the Q1 for this year, is from July to September. It's been contracted already before the start of the quarter. And they got done 40% of this year's revenues already contracted. So, I mean, if you look at this, I mean, you know, going forward, what's not like here? You've got, do you know, the only thing that's annoying, there's a seller in there. And that presents an opportunity because sellers can't last forever. Um, and that's suppressing the share price. Well, no, it's, in fact, it's, 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 a, it's a, what is it me? No, it's not me. 
It's oh, it's okay. um it's a um it's kind of called Genuity, which is a joint broker of this. I don't oh. know why. I think I think the reason why is because funds, of course, open ended funds have to say, if they get redemptions from private investors. So if, if, if you know if a company is investing in the fund of theirs. Uh, of kind of called or hedge fund or whatever, and they sell because the market's going down. They just sell some of their fund money. Then that fund has to redemptions has to sort of get the money from somewhere. So they, and I've noticed quite a lot recently funds just selling little bits of a stock across the board, just not not just specifically you know any company, just all companies, just because they're getting redemptions. So you've got this seller in there which is knocking the share price. And they are valued now at less than one time sales, uh, five times EBITDA, which you know a growing company should be ten times more. So they are cheap. They're a very hot area, and yet this this seller is giving you opportunity to get in on the cheap. You know, so it's, it's nuts. I, I can't see. You know, there, there, there are lots of companies out there that are insulated um, from this sort of uh, economy, macro economy. But this company is actually benefiting from it because you know, high energy prices were with us for a long time, and then beyond that, it's net zero. So uh, this is why I like. I think um, you know this is the kind of company you should take a little stake in to insulate your portfolio against. Because honestly, we will have lagging indicators and factors and numbers coming out over the next six to twelve months for certain parts of the economy. But this part of the economy will be strong. We know it'll do well. So uh, that's what I think. Um, anything else, okay. guys? Was uh, 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 quick thing on um, on uh, how's the film going, Pad McEnroe? How's the, how's it going? Um, yeah, it's going great. Yep. Pad, come on, you're a lot more enthusiastic than this. Come on. Come on. It's going well. It's it's been in the cinema and, yeah. I've seen some good reviews for it. I've yet yeah. to see it. So we got to go. Well, yeah, thanks for your support, guys. Well, I've, I've well, talked about it more than you have. So, uh, you know, on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, you should have just have gone to see it, though. That well, I will bad. do, but when you've got kids, it's, you know, they're always playing. Take them. They're not swearing, though. Yeah, well, is, it 50, <laughs> is, it, well, is it an age, age limit on it? So fifteen, but I mean they're tall, aren't they? They'll get away with it. Mm, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, how how many uh, cinemas is it on, Pan? And where? How do we? I don't think it's anywhere near me, is it? Oh, Pete, don't use. I mean, it, it definitely was, but I yeah, think yeah. they're I think they're they're in select cinemas now. Pete's trying to use excuses there, isn't he? Let's be honest. Yeah. Oh, I've been away, haven't I? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Working in France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pete, there won't be any cinemas in the French Alps. No. There we go. Because there aren't many there. I don't know what's the other day. Just a quick uh, recommendation. I don't know if you saw this. Um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Tom Cruise, right? In American Made, I think it's called. Have you seen that? No. It's very good. It's based on a true story. A guy called Barry. I can't think of the game. He was a, he was a pilot for TWA in America and started then just doing drugs runs for cartels in Mexico and then uh, arming the Contras in you know, South America. Uh, it was a true story and it's worth looking at because uh, it's phenomenal. And it, he was supplying drugs to Pablo and all that stuff. Uh, he had a team of like four guys in little sort of prop planes flying in out of, um, out of the you know, South American countries and dropped them in you know, America. But it's very good because um, it's crazy, crazy. But I'm just thinking that is, um, you know, those kind of stories, you know, that happened in life where you go from being, he was a proper corporate TWA pilot, trans, I don't know what the, you know, big, big airline pilot, commercial jets. And then uh, he went into just s- s- shipping drugs and, and guns around the world. And uh, it's, it's fascinating to watch. I do like Tom Cruise. Really? No, do you like him? Do you like Tom Cruise? Mm. Uh, I'm I'm impressed by his uh, his attention to the projects he works on. He mm. seems to, he gives it his all, and I think that's that's incredible at the age he's at. Like he's he's like sixty years old, and in Top Gun he looks I don't know mid thirties. Yeah. Um, well, that new film's supposed to be good, isn't it? I've not seen that. The Maverick. Maverick. It's supposed to be very it is. Good. It is good. Yeah. It, there's some very some very cheesy lines in it, but yeah, uh, I mean, that's that, all part you? of it, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, all right, boys. Well, um, I better go because Monty's going to uh, be leaving soon. So, better say goodbye to him. And uh, anything yes. you recommend on TV, film, Macaroni, the film, of course. Uh, Pete, have you watched anything on TV or anything like that? I really haven't. No. Good. Good recommendation. What, what do you Thanks. do then? What do you do of an evening? Do you read? Uh, yeah, yeah, and stare out the window. That's good. All right. Uh, anything else, Pad? You normally have you have you cut anything? Subscriptions, uh, services, any, any of that? Oh, we're going on a walk, aren't we? Soon, we're going to walk ten peak challenge. Yeah, doesn't sound like a walk. I mean, on the I'll map, it does out, look like it's more like just one peak. But um, yeah, so it, but, and, no, I think it's go on. It's a collection of peaks, you know, <laughs> in a range, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't sound as it doesn't. I mean, how many? It's about thirty. 
kilometers walk in a day, isn't it? We're doing in snow, yeah, in the yeah, Snowdonia. It's a long walk. Yeah, twenty something. Yeah, it's, it's a long, a long walk. walk. I should just call it long walk. Yeah, and yeah, the uh, long walk. They do say, oh, that's a peak there, is it? Well, that's a stone, isn't it? Speed <laughs> 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 bump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're doing that, but um, Marvel, I better get a bit by some walking shoes then. Uh, cool. Can I just do night, night trainers? Will that, will that be a cool? I don't know. Do I need walking yeah. shoes? Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, well. Just doing rollerblades. Yes, <laughs> down the peaks, up the peaks. Momentum. Yeah. That's how it works. With crampons. Crampons. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to get into your personal life, Pete. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We're doing it shirtless, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. shirtless with crampons, nipple crampons. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, <Yeah>. boys, we're here. <laughs> where, are you, where are you guys from? <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you want to see my two peaks or my three peaks if you're lucky? <laughs> Right, uh, right. means. Uh, thanks, boys. Right. Speak to you next week, hopefully. You know. All right. Bye. Bye. The Share Pickers Weekend Podcast with Justin, Paddy, Peter, and Steve. The content of this podcast is not intended as investment advice. It is for information purposes only. People in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy anything based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research.